Obviously, Fallout has a ton of mutants in the series. A good chunk of them come from the forced evolutionary virus, the bulk of those being super mutants. However, there are some that do not share a type of family of mutants. Let's talk about the unique FEV mutants. As I said, there's more than just super mutants and nightkin. Of course, 76 does have the Snallygasters and the Grafton Monster, but no, I'm not talking about them either. Nor am I talking about the third generation since of Fallout 4, which use both Sean's DNA and FEV. Rather, I'm talking about the FEV mutants that are so rare that the few of them which exist are probably unique individuals, and all of them come from the original Fallout. There's four of them that I know about. Two of them are pretty well known even to casual fans who haven't played the classics and two of them are less known even to plenty of original Fallout players. The two famous ones are The Master and Herald, while the last two are Talius and Tun Barricus. All four of these mutants were humans contaminated by FEV and mutated in unusual ways versus the standard super mutant. What's interesting is we have details on three of these contamination processes, which contributes to how they turn out the way they did. The Master is, of course, the most unique looking of the bunch. He had a very prolonged dipping, which resulted in him turning into a blob-like monster who is able to consume others into his mound of flesh, as well as integrate himself into machines and use psychic powers to attack others mentally, as well as communicate with his mutants telepathically. Talius and Harold are the most similar to each other. Both turned into ghoul-like mutants, but neither of them are truly ghouls, due to ghouls being created via radiation over FEV. Mind you, this wasn't entirely the case in the original Fallout, as it was being written. Harold is the more famous of the two, as he appeared in the original, Fallout 2, and Fallout 3. He was growing a tree from his head in the second game, and turned into a full-on tree by the third game. He was never actually dipped, but was rather simply near the FEV vats and Mariposa and blacked out, as he tells us through his stories. Though, the Fallout Survival Guy states that he got hold of an artifact that was contaminated by FEV. Talius is the more interesting example, as he's kind of the prototype to the Vault Dweller. He was sent out of Vault 13 years earlier, gotten pretty far in his venture, found where to get the water chip from Necropolis, and got captured and dipped, but was rescued by the followers of the apocalypse. Basically, he's the Vault Dweller at the Vault Dweller Lost mid-game, but there's no future information in regards to whether or not he grew a tree like Harold. I should point out that Talia's claim to have once been of low intelligence, but credits the followers of the apocalypse for his enlightenment. I'm kind of expecting that his brief dipping helped, but that's speculation. Tunbergus is also fairly interesting. He's the midway point between a human and a supermune. Tun claims to weigh, well, a ton. He's 2,000 pounds of pure muscle, and like super mutants, was also mutated by FEV. He doesn't explain much else about the process. We have no idea if he was dipped or for how long. Speculation warning, but I'm assuming he was dipped like super mutants and night kid, but wasn't dipped for long, seeing as how he kept his human look just a lot bulkier. He also kept his brain functionality and will even hit on female vault dwellers. I'm imagining a normal looking human head on a super mutant body and a mental image is kind of hilarious to me. That all being said, I find the versatility of the force evolutionary virus to be fairly interesting. And when we take these examples into account, it's a lot less surprising that FEV gets used so much for plot points. It's about entirely rewriting genetics. Though, still, I'd like to see something else. See, I really like the idea of there being more humanized mutants. The point lookout hillbillies are definitely closer to what I'd like to see, but you can't really enjoy them too much because they're all hostile. I'd love to see a number of regular NPCs that just have these weird mutations, but I do think using FEV is a little tired. I once suggested the idea of there being a rival project with a similar goal to FEV as a possible example one that may not have been finished in time or wasn't selected for whatever reasons. Maybe MedTech, basically a type of store brand FEV. Walmart's equate mutagen compared to West Tech's forced evolutionary virus. Could even use the original idea of the research lab getting newt and sprinkling the mutagen everywhere. Kind of like the glow. Anyways, it's a bit of a pretty short video, but I kind of wanted to bring some attention to these lesser known mutants. Super mutants and ghouls get a lot of love. And while three of the four of them are still pretty close physically in looks, as it seems to follow a ghoulish or super mutant-ish path, they do still have oddities about them. Harold's tree, for instance. Talius's increased intelligence may be partly credited to his mutation, and Tun retains a lot of himself. But regardless, I still wanted to point them out and go, yeah, we could use more of these type of guys. Yeah.